So the iPhone 7 launched September 16, 2016, which would make this phone four years old. In today's episode, our aim is to find out how well does the iOS 14 software perform for the iPhone 7. So what is up guys, Nick here, helping you to master your technology. This is the iPhone 7, rose gold. Maybe we're gonna see another rose gold iPhone this year after Apple did announce the iPad Air rose gold. But let's go ahead and go over here to settings here. And I'm gonna showcase to you that we are on software version 14.0. Point one, that's the latest as of the recording of this video. Now, if you wanna confirm the software version itself, the build number is 18A393. Okay guys, so here we are at the home screens and you can see the all new changes to the widgets here. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is the general performance of iOS 14.0.1, but I'm really just gonna cover 14 in general. So you see, and there was a little bit of a delay there. Now, when you first boot the iPhone 7 up into the 14, certain times you like you can go through through here, it, you might see a little bit of a stutter only when it's first booting up. You know, once you start running it for a while, it stops doing that. But scrolling through the home pages, this is an area where I'm not seeing any lag compared to, I actually, before this video, I was comparing this to the iPhone 11 Pro Max, and I'm not seeing any delay here when I go ahead and scroll through app library. When I go ahead and tap an app library and I scroll through all the applications here. As I'm scrolling through the home pages, of course, this is a 60 hertz display. I'm still not seeing any major delay. So for four years later here on iOS 14, this phone still feels very smooth. If we go here to the App Store, you're gonna notice when you are launching applications such as the App Store or other applications, you will find that it's just a little bit slower to load stuff up compared to a newer iPhone, just a little bit slow. You see right there, it's just a slight delay. It's not as snappy as the new phones. Now, you can see right there, just, just that slight second delay. So you are seeing that this A10 CPU, while it is a beast still, it's not you know as fast as you know 2020 phones. So once things get loaded up, everything is quite snappy here for iPhone 7. I am noticing, definitely, if you compare this to a newer iPhone, that it's just not as always a snappy, especially when launching applications and games like that, as you would expect. However, if you don't compare your iPhone to a newer iPhone, your iPhone 7 here, you're probably just gonna be very happy that your iPhone 7 can still run the latest iOS 14 on board. So definitely only by comparison to the newer phones, I see a little bit of a delay in snappiness. Now, one thing I will say also is that gaming. So when you are playing games for the iPhone 7, What's impressive is that you can still run top titles on this phone pretty easily. However, I will state that when you are running games on here, it does take a little bit longer to load than some of your newer games or your newer phones out there. So don't expect this to be some beast performer like some of the other phones out there. But again, if you're just casual gaming, the iPhone 7 can still play most of the casual games on the App Store today. That's the great thing about mobile. It's not really that resource intensive. So if you have a chip like an A10 Fusion, you still had a very powerful chip. So you can do games pretty easily on here. Now, one thing I do want to mention though, is that when in gaming though, the phone gets relatively hot. This is something that the iPhone 7 didn't used to do. I'm finding that this phone just gets hotter than it used to. I don't know if it's the software requires more on the processor. I don't know what it is. It just feels like it's getting hotter than when I first bought this phone. I don't know if everybody else is experiencing that. Let me know your experiences. Are you experiencing a hotter iPhone down below in the comments? But I just have to mention that because I'm feeling like this phone just heats up a bit quicker than it used to. And I also want to talk about battery life. This is another area. I actually had this battery removed and changed at Apple themselves. They put in a genuine battery. You can see there's still a 99% capacity on this one. The first one I got down to around 81, so I had to get this thing changed. But at the same time, you know, the battery life is just draining quicker than it used to. Now, if you still like this design and you want a better battery life, just go get yourself that new SE 2020. You'll be very happy. But the battery life, I mean, it just drops off pretty quick uh, these days on iOS 14. However, I'm not gonna say it won't get you through a day, but if you are pushing this phone, this is definitely gonna be needing to be topped up more often than you probably would like on 14. Confirm your battery life with the community down below in the comments section. Next up is the experiences of widgets. Now, the experience of widgets on here is actually quite similar to the larger phones. The only difference is that 
you're getting more information on a more compact screen. So it can feel a little bit tight. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just smaller. So it could feel like you're cluttering up your screen a little bit easier than a bigger iPhone just because there's it's a physically a smaller screen. But other than that, you can basically add the same widgets here and you can see sometimes they don't load up properly. I don't know what that's all about. You seen right there, screen time wasn't loading up. Some of these things can take a second to load up. It's not perfect yet, but definitely still works pretty well. And you can see widgets do look fantastic. They, they work the same as they work on the larger phones. So if you tap them, they go in. They're still not super interactive, just like the larger phones, but you do have 3D touch on here. You can punch in, you can edit these widgets, your locations stuff like that on certain widgets. But overall, you can still do a lot of the same customizations, which is pretty nice here. And one thing I like is that when I go to add the widget, I'm not seeing lag when pressing on the widget for my iPhone 7, so that's excellent. Also, when going through here to kind of swipe through these home screens faster, never froze, never lag. This seems like something that would just lag on a different phone. I don't know why, it just feels that way. But you see nothing there. So if I tap this check mark right here, I can go ahead and hide these pages and you know, kind of remove them and stuff like that. So you can see that works pretty fantastic for the iPhone 7 as well. Pretty impressed that you can run this modern software and the only thing that you really kind of feel an upgrade for or might feel an upgrade for is just the hardware, the hardware itself, but the phone still runs good. And when in Safari, if you are like opening up some of these web pages, they will start to reload some of them. You'll just see a little, sometimes you'll see the loading bar because two gigs of RAM, just isn't enough to hold everything in memory. So do keep in mind that sometimes you are gonna get reloads on this phone. Now, it didn't quite happen 100% there, but I've seen it happen multiple times. If you go ahead and swipe through here and you reopen an old application, it will reload like it did there because it just doesn't have enough. And while we're in iMovie right here, I do wanna mention that if you're running Apple's iMovie for the iPhone or LumaFusion, you can still render out 4K video, 1080. Now, it doesn't render out as fast on the iPhone 7, but no real major lag when scrolling or buffering through anything right here. I mean, this is why, you know, iPhone is a really good investment long-term. If you are keeping a phone, I mean, long-term, like three to five years or better, you can just see, it can still do what the iPhone 7 intended to do from the start. So the next thing I want to discuss is the camera. So I have this little battery right here we're going to use as an example. Let me go ahead and grab the camera wherever I did stick it on this home screen. Again, when you start putting those widgets, things get lost in iOS. Let's hit the camera. And of course, it still takes pretty good pictures. I mean, iPhones have been doing that for a while. And also, if you hold down, it still has that old burst mode. You can't like swipe it to the left to go to video. So the iPhone 7's camera experience and 14 still a little bit behind. So what are my thoughts overall for iOS 14 for the iPhone 7? Well, again, it doesn't feel as snappy as newer phones, but you wouldn't expect that. That seems like common sense at this point. Um, I'm just happy that you can run it for your iPhone 7. The 7 came out four years ago, so you're still running very modern software. The phone, does it still feel modern though because of the software? And the answer to that question is no. The reason it doesn't feel modern is because of the design. If you take a look at the 11 Pro, the newer iPhones and the 12s coming, this has 4G, those should have 5G more than likely. Using the home button, swiping up from the bottom to get to control center. I mean, this whole experience just feels dated. So even though you have the latest software, the phone still feels kind of dated, but at the same time, the software itself feels nice and modern. So yes, if you haven't downloaded 14, I think you should give it a go. If you don't like widgets, probably just stick with your old software until you get a new iPhone, but you might as well try it because this is the future of iPhone right here. Maybe eventually we can turn off the app library if we don't like that, but not at this point. Let us know your thoughts on the iPhone 7 with iOS 14. Share with the community. For people who didn't download, maybe they can learn a little bit about this. And if you guys wanna see other iPhones, like a review on the software, the iOS 14 software to kind of see how those are running. There's plenty more in the lineup, so let me know if you'd like to see that. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Nick here. Be sure to be well and peace.